I've decided to read out some comments which were left by people under my previous videos. Um, just to demonstrate that the idea that everything in the comments section of YouTube videos is vitriolic bile is just simply not true. Um, some very intelligent, thoughtful people do um, have conversations in the YouTube comments section. So, with that in mind, the first one I've picked out is by Mam Amhias. I may be mispronouncing that. Here it goes. The Cold War is heading for part two. Only the three main proponents are even crazier than before. Trump and Kim threaten each other with nuclear weapons, and now Putin is claiming to have the biggest, best nuclear weapons in history. I had hoped that after living through the Cold War Part 1, that would be it. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, things do seem to be racking up. Um, the, uh, the tension is escalating, um, and it does not seem healthy. You have to wonder sometimes how much of it is bluff, um, but, you know, I, I don't think it's a good idea to be messing around with nuclear weaponry. She goes on to write, It sounds like your commenter is incapable of envisaging anything outside of his own narrow-minded beliefs. That's um, Yosef MacGruber. She's talking about there, the guy who thinks that um, there's no such thing as overpopulation or ecological carrying capacity and that women should be pushing out babies all the time. Anyway, sorry, I, I digress. Back to her comment. I doubt that anything he is told will ever help change his mind. Maybe the news should get it... Maybe the news, should it get worse, will help. Though, frankly, I'd rather there were ignorant people and no nukes. Yeah, I agree with that too. He can't pick up the concept of irradiated soil making farming in places like that impossible for countless centuries. Probably not. Um, however, Mr. MacGruber, maybe you can enlighten us and um, tell us that you are able to take on board such concepts. Anyway, another comment um, left by Sean in the Clouds that um, seemed interesting to me. There are more people on this planet that think like you than you or many like-minded people realise. It's the matter of who's in power, which is who has the money. My husband and I told our two adult children that just because your parents had children doesn't mean you have to. Our daughter is 27 and does not want children. Our son is 31 and says the children that he teaches in his classrooms are the only children he needs. My husband and I will not be grandparents and that's okay. Love your video of your shared thoughts. Thank you. Um, I do, you know, for, for a very long time, I was one of those uh, young people teenagers, someone in my 20s and in my 30s, and I did not want to bring children into the world. But I got to the age of roughly, it was, I think it was when I was 39, I was very ill. Um, I ended up getting sepsis and I was in hospital um, in, in intensive care for about a week. And uh, I, think of, I think of it as my close encounter with the Grim Reaper. And that did make me think long and hard about life and death. And it was round about that time that my wife and I um, decided that it might be a good idea to, you know, bring a child into the world. And since we did, um, our two little ones are, you know, wonderful little people. And I hope that we can um, give them the best possible start in life and um, also that they um, are encouraged by us to um, lead lives which don't have neg major negative impacts on the planet um, and they, they're not, they don't go down the uh, consumer route. Uh, more on that another time, the, the, the whole concept of regarding people as consumers um, 
it's a kind of sad but partly true um, and not very healthy. But anyway, that's something I shall return to. There's another one here I'd like to read out, also by Mam Amhias. Um, she says, I understand exactly where you're coming from. My biggest worry is the rise of the extreme right throughout the world. Not just because of the obvious reasons, but because they seem to be the most selfish. E.g. in the USA, with Trump virtually demolishing any pro-ecology legislation works organisations that Obama had set up. Uh, just from a personal point of view, I, am, I really am fairly apolitical. Um, I'm not a, certainly not a fan of Trump. Um, wouldn't say I was a fan of Obama either, but um, that's not to say either of them haven't done some good things. Um, I, I don't really claim to be an expert, um, but obviously other people's opinions are interesting to, to hear. The EPA is being run into the ground by a climate change denier. Yes, I think that is a very worrying thing, the Environmental Protection Agency. Um, it's, it boggles the mind that someone who is actively um, you know, anti-scientific like that could be in charge of an organisation which purports to uh, try to take care of the environment. Anyway, um, carrying on. Um, sustainable food growth is something else which needs non-ideological discussion and action. A better understanding of what GM actually does for crop yields would be a good start. Where possible, countries should limit the import of food and grow as much as possible themselves. Yep, good point. Widening the types of crops grown in a single area has long been known to be the best way of growing with limited fertiliser, pesticides, etc. Rotation is centuries old and careful planning so that each crop which takes over the field in the following year uses different amounts and types of natural food, in quotes, leaving a year, usually the fourth, for it to lie fallow, brackets, growing grass which can be turned into silage for winter cattle food, close brackets, is the least stressful on nature. I do worry about the future though. I was much like you in that I never wanted kids when I was younger, but somehow ended up with four. I currently have two biological grandchildren and one step-grandson, and to be honest, I hope that my other kids will not be in a hurry to have any of their own. Though one in particular would be an outstanding parent like my daughter who's had her own. We just have to be fair and pay our fair share to help prevent the effects of climate change speeding up and... What have I done? It's disappeared. Sorry about that. Um, modern technology. Uh, let me just find where I was. I've got the page back. Um, right. We just have to be fair and pay our fair share to help prevent the effects of climate change speeding up and harming the most vulnerable elsewhere. I say that as a disabled gran who can't go to work anymore, much to my and my bank's chagrin. If it means I have to go without some things, then so be it. Um, yeah, I think that uh, speaks for itself. Um, Another one here from J.E. Hoyes. I have a lot of optimism about the future. I suspect we are on the verge of big leaps in technology and healthcare. The global population is beginning to level out as more women get access to education, healthcare and opportunity. I'm hopeful that our dependence on fossil fuels will, re will recede as quickly as technology allows and I suspect this will happen very quickly over the next couple of decades. I hope so, and um, I would like to be... I, some days I'm more optimistic than others. Um, sometimes when you watch the news, the, the, what seems to be mostly bad news, um, it's very discouraging and depressing even. Um, but at the same time, there are good things happening in various places. Um, and it's almost like more and more people are waking up 
Um, another concept I'd like to come back to. Um, I have this idea about how it's possible to wake up in multiple stages and you know you think you're fully awake or fully aware of something and then you learn something new and you wake up a bit more and you wake up a bit more. Um, it's not just uh, you know from childhood into adolescence into adulthood but as as you keep going and learn more um, yeah it's an ongoing process waking up. Um, anyway back to J. E. Hoy's comment I chose not to have children for so many reasons. I couldn't think of one legitimate reason to have children, so I'm a bit of an antinatalist, but not one that wants human extinction, which I think would be a sad loss. I don't think it would be terrible for, for the planet, but it would be so sad to lose the one species on the planet that has the best chance of understanding and improving this shared existence. Meanwhile, go vegan. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree pretty much with that, uh, well put. Um, when it comes to vegan, um, I'm not a vegan myself, however, it is a it is a direction I lean in. I'm not vegetarian um, either, but um, again, I lean in that direction and um, I think, you know, if the amount of meat and dairy which the human race consumed was drastically reduced, um, not necessarily by everyone stopping eating it all together, but um, just instead of having meat three times a day, have it once or twice a week. Um, it's a step in the right direction. Another concept I'd like to come back to um, is it's not going to be poss it's not going to be possible to fix everything in the world in one fell swoop, um, and even. Uh, like a revolution which some people talk about where you tear the whole system down and start from scratch I think is I think the, the destruction will almost certainly outweigh the good it could do but a lot of people um, tweaking things here and there making small adjustments in their lives um, trying to improve things um, on however however small a scale they uh, is appropriate to them it's uh, steering things in a better direction. Anyway, um, another one here from Deep Ashtray. Seems to me we are going through a slow burn towards planet-wide biological impoverishment. Barring a major calamity such as an asteroid impact or full-scale nuclear war, humans will most likely persist well into the future. The question being how we will adapt to a planet increasingly devoid of functioning natural systems. Um, yeah, I think um, Deep Ashtray has a pretty good and realistic um, understanding of the situation. Um, not too alarmist, um, somewhat pessimistic, um, and probably quite realistic. Um, Pilgrim Pater. Pilgrim Pater? I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Has written... Sir David Attenborough, I would imagine, he doesn't say, proposed a good point which I am paraphrasing and enhancing here, in that population stability can be achieved by globally empowering women to decide if they want a child rather than be a baby-making machine, according to a patriarchal culture. Um, yes, that uh, the whole idea of educating women and allowing them access to contraceptives should they choose to use them um, I think is definitely a step in the right direction. I'm certainly not a fan of abortion um, and that's something which often gets brought up whenever, any, whenever anyone talks about overpopulation. They automatically assume that you're pro-abortion. Um, I am definitely not um, but that does, as a, as a male, I feel that I'm underqualified um, to intervene in women's lives and I do think it's ultimately the women in question's choice what they do with their own body. So that may sound a bit weaselly but that's 
uh, in case anyone's wondering, and it, it does come up from time to time, that's more or less what I think about abortion. Horrible thing, um, but uh, as a male, I don't wish to interfere in the personal lives of women. Um, Pilgrim Pater goes on to write, I think converting deserts to arable land a good idea, but it will only delay the problem of supply and demand for fertile soil. It may bide us t time to come up with a solution. As long as children are born to starve or live a life of abject poverty, we surely have a, have a problem. Um, this is another thing I want to come back to in more detail, but um, a brief summary. Um, it is possible to build soil literally from the air. Um, even the most infertile soils and deserts, um, if you are able to irrigate them um, and start off by growing just whatever can grow there, adding organic material, um, which might just be the plants themselves once they've gone through their life cycle, um, and start to build compost, humus, um, that adds carbon into the soil and the carbon itself helps um, encourage bacterial, uh, bac bacterial growth and other microorganisms which um, can actually break up the, not break up, um, consume uh, the sand, the stones, the rocks, the clay, whatever is there which is not particularly fertile to plants directly. Um, and bring nu nutrients out of that. So growing a variety of different plants on infertile soil um, does build up new soil um, and it's not something you need uh, big machinery for, it's not something you need artificial fertilizer for, um, but it's something I would like to give a more thought out, prepared presentation about at some point. So something I'd like to come back to. Um, I think I'll do one or two more of these and then stop. I don't know. Because, I, because I'm recording this on one phone and reading it from another one, I don't know how long I've been going on for. I don't want to make these too long. Anyway, Daniel Lassander. There is one small problem I would like to address. Smaller farms are usually also less effective. They need more resources to grow the same amount of food. I also think we should try to use deserts for solar farms and not agriculture. However, a balance needs to be struck so no one has to starve. And Gman6365 responded to that. His response was, Small plots can achieve higher yields per hectare than large plots. They can even achieve this without the heavy use of fertilizers, herbicides and pesticides that Western agribusiness uses. Remember these chemicals are generally made from raw material sourced from and by processes powered by oil. Further, they are transported and applied by vehicles powered by oil. Factor in all the workers who travel to and from work by oil powered vehicles and don't forget that the chemicals are transported in plastic containers that are themselves often a product of the petrochemical industry. However, such small plots do require a considerable increase in one resource, man-hours. The question is, how many man-hours are equivalent to, say, 100 litres of chemicals added to the soil? Without knowing this, one can't say which approach is more resource-heavy. Um, yeah, I pretty much agree with all of that. Some um, One little thing I'd like to address is the, um, the fact that people like me get genuine enjoyment out of um, pottering around and growing things. I've been growing trees and shrubs and a, a small limited amount of food for a number of years and seeing things grow um, it's something I'd gladly do. Um, I don't care with, well, I don't get paid for it. Um, it's, a, it's a hobby, but I would gladly do more of that. Um, and I think that working with nature directly and growing food is, um, 
a real antidote. You know, people in the modern world, um, the consumer heavy economy, people living in big cities are very often very stressed out. And I would not be surprised if a large number of people, if they could spend more time um, on the land, living off the land, growing food, even if it's you know, not using heavy machinery, it's la labour intensive, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, Daniel Lassander replied to the other comment, um, well my standpoint is that with increased plot size you can make it more effective without increasing man hours, freeing up people to pursue other careers such as science. Now I have to admit that we do have a big problem with our emissions, but, and there is a but, Science has increased our effectiveness tremendously. Less fuel needed, less maintenance, less oil used. We can never reach zero emissions, of course, but we can combat our emissions with replanting, etc. And that is used very much in the Western world. We could also use better fuels such as alcohol or electricity as well. Um, yeah, I think um, most of that makes makes sense, although I wouldn't say electricity is a fuel, but um, you can certainly use alcohol, biodiesel, various other things to generate electricity, as well as wind and solar and wave and hydroelectric and that sort of thing. Anyway, those are the comments which I um, picked out to read because they um, make interesting points and at some point in the future, when I have more spare time, I would like to make more edited and prepared videos um, than I am able to at the moment. So thank you for watching and see you next time.